kicks, Brooks. Come on. You people will clap at anything. We definitely will, but come on. You guys have a seat. Come on, friends. How's it going? You work every day with this many people around? These, yeah. Wow. These, I'd these, be nervous. We need a big staff. I'd be nervous. We're not very good. I'm not very good alone, so i got to have all of them to make me better. <laughs> Look at This is cool for me. Listen, I know that we've met. Mm. I know that well, when we see each other last at the... Um, Kennedy in, Center, in, in DC, yeah. DC, yeah. you know, near the, our nation's capital. Yeah, and so, but this is, you guys have never been on my show, and that's no. this is pretty cool for me. If I'm being it honest is. with you, pretty cool for us. Yeah, Brooks and Dunn are here. Uh, Kicks, you and I met. I don't know if you remember, but the first and second time I played the opera, you were playing, and I went into your room, and you're very nice to me. That was you. That was me. <laughs> I think the first time we met actually was was at when the uh, in Norman, Oklahoma. Oh, that's right for the we tornado. Yeah, did, uh, we both did a benefit uh, together out there, and that's right. Yeah. I, I had to get over there quick, and your manager was nice enough to go, "Hey, get on the plane," and then you and I flew back together. Yeah, but I don't want to say that because I don't know if you wanted you to know how rich you are. Mm. Shut so, up! It, it wasn't my plane. Was, <laughs> whose plane was that anyway? I was just saying. Yeah, <laughs> who knows? I just well, got on, and nobody said anything. So yeah, that's me too. Luckily, it was going back to Nashville. More important than that, yeah. this, this could turn into a payola trial. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's true. <laughs> that's true. For a jet ride. And Ronnie Dunn. Yeah. Come on, Ronnie. What? Okay. Come on. Are you kidding me? Yeah. I, Shut up. Have you seen you? What are you about to say? What, no, I'm gonna say nothing. Open it's, the door. We've yeah. all been just like. I used to get on the radio and beg you guys to come in. You what? Guys, you, and you guys, I didn't. Did what? Oh, so okay. We should listen to the radio. I, I, Kicks, I would I call your radio station and be like, "Hey, can Kicks come over?" <laughs> and they would be like, "No." And I was like, "I don't care. We've worked for somebody Nobody else." Nobody ever That's told so me wrong. anything. I know. Yeah. What's up with this project? Because I know about it. It's out. There are a couple songs out today. How do you feel when someone does, like, a celebratory project toward you, Ronnie? Like they made these songs. The two that are out today. Luke Combs is brand new man. Kane Brown does believe. Like, how does that feel when someone celebrates you and makes your music? Well, it just kind of makes you feel kind of old, you know? And then I, <laughs> that's my neurosis. And then I get over that and go, dang, how cool could this? It's, it's super cool, you know? And they started guys. it. They had to get in the studio with these guys, yeah. you know, and, and get to do it in real time. You know, in today's, you know, digital age, everybody's like, the guitars are going on across town. This the drummers are over here. Singers are over here. One's over here. We all got in the same room and did it. I'm going to hear this. You can, there's some headphones there if you want them, but I'm going to play a little bit of... Brand new man from Luke Combs. You can check this out right here. So you guys are in the room whenever that's happening? Like you yeah. guys are making that with them? Yeah, oh, Dan, yeah. Dan, Dan Huff put us the uh, producer Old school. in the room with like next to one another face to face. That is old school. And yeah. you know... Luke actually had posted him and a couple of his band guys acoustically playing Brand New Man. And and it got sent around to us. And, you know, we just said, dude, that's cool. You know, it's great. And it's kind of how this got going. It really wasn't our idea. A couple of different Casey Musgraves was doing Neon Moon in her show and whatever. And our manager said, man, these, these acts seem to dig y'all's music. And there may be a project here, you know. So we're like, what? And he, I guess he came back about a month later and said, hey, I got a big list and everybody seems to be in. So we said, well, shoot, let's sing them again. Here's Kane Brown. And I'm okay sitting in front of you telling you that. I'll geek out a little bit. Dang. I think I have every time I've met you, I've geeked out. And that'll always happen. But, like, that song didn't even go number one back in the day. And when I hear that, that's quintessential Brooks and Dunn. Right? That song didn't even go number one, and everybody knows every word to it. That's you know, crazy you, to me. Well, no. I mean, so many career songs that come along for you as, as an act, that's like they, they, they don't necessarily hit number one. You know, and and that, was a, that song was long. You know, <laughs> I remember Keith Urban doing it uh, with us in the uh, Country Fest concert and turned around in the middle of the show and he goes part of the rehearsal and he goes uh this is no this is no like uh two-minute boy band song <laughs> <laughs> so 
Yeah, it's uh, it, just so I think many. Kane was a great surprise there. Kane, too. he stepped up. I mean, and his records are one thing, but when yeah. you plug somebody into a song like that, and that's that's Ronnie's tune. I can't take any credit for it, but I, I think we both just kind of looked at each other when he started singing and went, "Wow, this is going to be good." No, when he when he like like really started singing and just looked like like bared down on it, man, it's like, dude, all the stuff you need in your voice is there. Love it. So. The, the whole new album, by the way, there are two songs out today, but the whole album comes out April 5th and uh, Reboot. And so who else is on it? Casey's on it. Kane and Luke, obviously, are on Luke Combs. Who else? Thomas Rhett, uh, Brett Young. Dang. Um, Lanco. Lanco. I mean, I have the list. Yeah. If you want me to just read it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Read it. I, I, you know, I just act like I don't know yeah. everything. I know everything. I just act like Bobby. I don't. Yeah, Come yeah, yeah. on, help us. Brothers Osborne, <laughs> Ashley <laughs> McBride, John Party, Brett Young, Lanco, Midland, Cody Johnson, and Tyler Booth. That's that was it. fun. You know, it, it, yeah, all those guys. You can, I can make comments about all of them, but yeah. you, know, you know, probably don't have enough time. Let me ask you a couple questions. I've always wanted to know in my heart. Is that okay? Yeah. Can we do it? Can I ask like some Bobby Hart questions? Go. All right. Because I. When I've spent time, I don't want to geek out, but now you're in my world. I can do whatever I want. <laughs> it's like, welcome to Bobby's house. Um, okay, so you guys got together like uh, 31 years ago. I looked it up, like exactly 31 years ago. Holy cow. You get put together, right? Like suggested that you guys should meet each other, right? So who makes that suggestion, and what's the first impression you guys have of each other when you meet? Take it, KB. Well, Tim Dubois called us both up. Um, he, he was he was starting uh, uh, the label Arista at the time, Nashville, with Clive Davis. He'd already signed Alan Jackson, so he didn't want another boy singer. He was trying to get one of everything. Yeah. And he'd signed Diamond Rio. He'd signed Pam Tillis was his girl. Total formula. Yeah. And <laughs> the Judds were breaking up, so he was determined to get a duo. He needed a new duo. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, he just said... We literally met at lunch uh, over a bad enchilada, and he pretty more or less offered us a record deal if you know if it worked out, if we could work together. He didn't really say that. He said, yeah. "Go away and write some songs," and yeah. we did. And, and came that back. same week, we wrote a "Brand New Man" and "Next Broken Heart." That was Tuesday. We wrote those songs on Thursday and Friday, demoed them, and took them back. And he jumped up and down, and then he offered us a record deal. But when you, okay, you're right, "Brand New Man." Do you go? Oh, we ha this is something. Like we didn't even know each other, you know, three days ago. But we were a brand new man. This is something. We didn't know. You never. We never know. You never know when you write them, and, and but until they, you know, they're, they're become hits, I guess. Or I thought popular. it was pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I really on. did, because you know, and Ronnie had that idea. I'm a changed man, and and uh, it's my near miss on what if we change that. But he already had the. I saw the light, and I was baptized by the, you know, and Ronnie came from Oklahoma. He hadn't been hanging out in Nashville for 10 years like me, so he had a lot of fresh ideas that I think we get bogged down in formula writing sometimes when you're doing that for a living. So it was, for me as a writer, it was a really a breath of fresh air, honestly, to, to have some new ideas that you weren't just sitting in a room and everybody passed around 20 times already. And it was kind of, it was fun. We wrote a lot of stuff early that... Yeah. I thought it had some good energy to it. Whenever Boot Scoot and Boogie happens and the dance blows up and everybody's that's you know what? I actually learned a two step to Boot Scoot and Boogie. Like a big part of my life was being in Arkansas and this girl named Carrie Carter had the biggest crush on was like, I'm gonna teach you how to had a two step and and electric slide, by the way. Both of them I learned to wow. Boot Scoot and Boogie, the same song. Yeah. And so when the Boot Scoot and Boogie starts to be a thing, did you guys come up with that dance? Did you guys know it was going to be a thing? Like, how does that whole thing happen? I, I wrote it in Oklahoma, and we were playing a, a big club there called Tulsa City Limits. And uh, it, we, we had to do cover songs, and you play club, you know, bars and mm -hmm. stuff. Or it, they, don't, they don't want original stuff. And uh, the, these people kept coming up and asking us to play it again. So I kind of thought, well, maybe there's something there. So we'd sneak into the set late at night. But they were doing those dances, and you know the, the dance, all the, the line dancing, and all that stuff was already up and going, you know, strong in Oklahoma, Texas. But down there, if you if you play a song or do or play in any of the clubs, and they don't dance, then you you know you're out. So we had to had to write songs that that kept people moving. You had to write in, in turn, soul beer or now. Yeah, coming. right. Mm -hmm. So that was I've never been close to a line dance. I, mean, I can two step a little. I would kill myself. I'm the clumsiest person in the world. I'd kill myself trying to line dance. Well, we used to stand in front of the stage and go, mm, yeah, yeah. Mm, <laughs> I'd do that. That looks dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> the boost Scoot and Boogie was such a big part of the song, though. Like, it, I mean, for two guys that don't dance, like, that was such a massive part of the song, was that was the music video. Man, I remember watching CMT. That's crazy. 
That's awesome. We're Can I just stand here and tell you how awesome you are for like 15 minutes? Shut like th up. This is the best thing. Am I geeking out too hard <laughs> or no? It's fine. Keep it going. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so how about these Las Vegas shows you guys are doing? Like you come back together, right? I mean, I bet that pays so much, right? Those Vegas shows. Holy crap. Little change. All this and money, too? I mean, yeah. right. Like you get to play all the hits. <laughs> and that Vegas, do you stay in Vegas for like three or four days? They put you up? How does that work? They, uh, they, they give us all a suite. And uh, uh, have you seen the end of yours yet? Mm. Oh, it's they're that big, huh? Like Elvis, you Come get a sweet on. roller skates. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> you get a butler, <laughs> yeah. a couple of butlers. So if you want something at any time, you get that. But that, other, other than that, you get a good cool. view. Yeah, we're, we're two weeks at a time, four times a year. So you're out there, you do three shows a week, and uh, you know, get some golf in, and and it's just fun to stumble down from your hotel room onto a stage where all your guitars are in tune and it sounds the same as it did last night and just to sing and play it's about as great a situation as as you could ever hope for and it's fun to sing those songs again i think it was good for us to get away from it for a few years and and reba you know kind of we got a great referee out there so you know it's it's we've been having a good time honestly we uh, we both we mentioned earlier with the Kennedy Center honors and you guys have a longer relationship with Reba than I do I'm again a huge Reba fan and she's been great to me uh, but how did you guys become friends with Reba gosh she we, hired us in 92 was, or 93 yeah. I guess she was the first tour that, that, that we actually got hooked up with and uh, hired us I think back then there were like four or five major tour straight alabama mm. who else vance i think yeah yeah and then reba so we, she had a spot and gave us the opening yeah. spot she gave like, us 10 feet of stage in 10 minutes and a hundred dollars a night yeah we took 100 it. bucks <laughs> crazy but, but a few years later um we both kind of kind of got a good uh, good wave going and um and hooked up i think in 96 and maybe 97 we uh we did some co-headlining together we had 21 trucks and 19 buses out on that tour so for for, well, that for a hillbilly cheap, huh? band it was no, a no big bunch of money, stuff but yeah. it looked good <laughs> wow <laughs> what song is it what gets the biggest reaction when you play it like what song because you have so many hits I, I, people probably react differently everywhere you go yeah. but what, what's the one where you get people go boom first lick they got it i'd probably uh, say my maria. Uh, maria oh come yeah. on that's a damn yeah. 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 <laughs> maria gotta be kidding me Amy, we have freaking Brooks and Dunn in here. I know. Isn't this crazy? Anything you want to ask? I've been hogging this whole interview. I have like 10 pages of <laughs> no, notes I made last night. No, you're doing great. You got it. You I made last night. Here. Here's page one. Tell them they're awesome. Check. <laughs> <laughs> it's going by. It's a big little formula. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Love you guys. Two. Pa page two. Remind them how awesome they are. Yes. <laughs> Page three. Good luck in the future. <laughs> See you <up> later. <laughs> brand, brand New Man was the first one, first number one. What's that number one party like back then? First time you get a number one. Oh, Back man. in the day, you hit number one. What do you do? I know Donna Hilly threw us a party. It was ahead of Sony at the yeah. time. I just remember we were Obviously. big into, you know, our logo is this, this, this longhorn steer on steroids, and Donna didn't know the difference but bless her heart we turn the corner on our party and she's got a cow out there you know with these little horns i just remember going okay well that's good effort you know and yeah but branding it was, not yeah, yeah. <laughs> did but it ever it get cool. too big for you guys where you go you look around and you go holy crap like this is this is a lot like a lot of trucks a lot of stage did it ever go this is this is a show I don't, I don't, you know it, it, it's just a matter of a personal you know, I guess subjective viewpoint, but there, there was time when it was growing to the point to where you get on the bus and, and the door would open and shut like every 15 minutes. Somebody going, "Hey, man, we, we need more lights. We need to add the lights. What do you think about adding, you know, more more monitors and that kind of stuff?" And that was that's that's the most strenuous part, I think, just dealing with the day to day. Got going, God, I hope we're not going to step out there and you know not have enough equipment. Uh, and it was that was kind of out of our our wheelhouse, you know. It's like oh, I just want to sing and write songs. It's like there's more to it than that, obviously. You ever do the thing where you yell the wrong city? Like what up, Tupelo? Mm. So we were talking the other day about it. It's, out, it's those weekends awesome. when you're in Rapid City and Cedar Rapids, and you know some other something city, you know, that where you really have to remind yourself. I think the worst mistake I ever made that way was we played the basketball coliseum at Michigan State. And I, and I was really disoriented walking to the stage. And um, I'm going, God, where are, what town is this, though? I know, I know we're at Michigan State, but 
Anyway, I just I see their logo going to the stage, and I went, okay, I got this. So well, you want to scream something when you go out there. You know, I walked out there, and I go, how about you, Trojans? And she's oh. like, Boo! And I'm like, I know, I saw it was on the wall. You know, I went, oh, I'm Spartans. You know what I mean? Spartans are like, Boo! You know, no, you're not coming back, dude. It's like halfway through the show, they start to kind of clap really and smile again. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, funny. Come on. So we started typing. We had duct tape. We had you write, you write the, you wrote the city on the ground, oh, right? Yeah. I swore I'd never have to do that, but Red Dirt Road. Did you write this one by yourself, Ronnie? No. Kicks did the heavy lifting on. Oh, is that is that what happened? Yeah. yeah. What's the heavy lifting mean, by the way? Does that mean you come in with most of the article? He most jumped of the song? up on the bus one night after a show, and he said, and "He said, like, let's, I've got this idea. And did you have the title or whatever?" That's, and yeah. we started talking about it. And I said, "Well, I grew up like on Rural Route Three in, in Eldred, Arkansas, kind of." You know, and uh, we we talked about a lot of that stuff. And I'm not sure we didn't have the chorus, you know, well on its way. So, so funny how we remember this stuff. Yeah, every, everybody <laughs> writes song with, co-write with, have a different story. I'll tell you what really happened when <laughs> after he does it. Exactly. Right? <laughs> so this is my lie, and I'm sticking yeah. to it. Uh, and then I remember us having to like take off and go, and we were it was a long, long drive, like from somewhere like somewhere to Oregon. We landed in San Francisco, and we had a show in Sacramento God. at Arco. Yeah. See, I'm in Oregon. You're on the other coast. Okay, anyway. you're, close. You're, close on the, you're on the right coast. Okay. <laughs> They're both over there. All right. So, anyway, here I am in Beijing. <laughs> uh, the buses take off. We go the next morning, kicks his bus, is parked out in front of us, and I see him get out, and, it, and his, his hair is like, it looks like he's been through a freaking World War Three or something. And he stumbles up on the bus with his guitar, and, and he plays plays the song, the verses. And I was like, good. God, man. Bingo. You hit it. Boom. You can tell. Done. So what really happened? <laughs> Ronnie wrote down the primarily those great lines from the chorus on the airplane flying to San Francisco. Hmm. You had Terry McBride with you. And he hands it to me and goes, what do you think of this? I'm like, shit, that is great. And we had had this discussion about where we grew up and the Red Dirt Roads. And we had decided to name our album that, but we said we got to write a song that, that goes with it. So I jumped on my bus, he jumps on his, and we head for Sacramento. And I just grabbed my guitar, went to work. We get there, him and Terry go knock on my door and go, let's go get a steak. And I said, cool, but uh, you got to hear this first. So I made him listen, and That's in a rare up. Ronnie Dunn form, he went, I love it. That's freaking great. I went, what's wrong with you? Let's go. <laughs> Let's eat a steak, <laughs> drink a beer, all that kind of stuff. What, what was the one uh, hit that you guys had with over uh, 23 number one? I think you have 23 number ones. I l or looked earlier. What's the one where you wrote and you went, that's the one? Like you could tell immediately because I'm going to ask you the flip side of this in a second. What's the one where you went, that's a hit? Red Dirt. Red Dirt was pretty close. I mean, I, I think that was a moment where we were all sitting around and then he. You know, Played it for the first time and we went, ooh, I think I think we've got it. Then we went in the studio and then it, you know, here comes that lick, and then it just turned into a like boom. I couldn't wait to get home and play that for Mark Wright because we had we had started gathering up yeah. some songs, but we needed that anchor and to go with the title, you know. And that's it's just that moment where you go, ah, we did it. So many variables, you know, contribute to that aha moment, and, and a lot of times it's just when you sit down in the studio not knowing where it's going to go. And the guitar player, usually it's a guitar player, yeah. will sit down and hit hit that lick. And he hit that intro lick. Bah, 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 and it just turned into like a kind of an anthem kind of thing. And away we went. On the other side of that, what major song, what, what big hit do you guys have that took forever? And you're like, oh, this thing took forever to write. Took, we didn't get it right in producing it the first couple times. We didn't put it. Like, what's the struggle song? They're all struggle. <laughs> <laughs> That's like having to go do your homework. It's fun to sing, fun to fun to play. But. I think um, "Hillbilly Deluxe" was one that was a totally different song than "Believe," but it was a song that never, you know, barely got in the top ten. It might have made it. It might not even made top ten. But I watched our sales double, and and it's some of those songs just like "Believe." People to this day go, "That song changed my life." Those songs that have the impact and that really make a difference and whatever, they're not always those ditties that slam up to number one on radio or something like that. But you feel a connection to your fans and, and to your career that uh, you're like, man, that's, that, one, that one got down there. That one did some good. You know the song that 
and I've often referenced it on the show. We talk about songs that actually make you like physically <clears throat> cry or feel something. Like cowgirls don't cry. Are you kidding me? Are you still? If that thing comes Have you on, heard that man. <laughs> <laughs> you look out in the audience and see a big cowboy just like, oh man, start wiping tears away. That song still get. I, I've heard the song ten thousand times and I hear it again, and I don't. I don't know if it's Reba being in it too that pushes me over the edge. But are you kidding me? Then she sings it back after her dad dies. I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> it's like, there were a lot of redheads that had had a part in that. Uh, Terry McBride has has a redhead daughter. I have two daughters <laughs> that are redheads, and then Reba, the Reba factor in there as well. That song. That. And they're all into horses. That song, guys. Hmm. I'm telling you. I don't know if I've said this yet. Let me, you guys are awesome. Have I told you guys that so far? <laughs> Just making sure. sure. All right. Page four. I think you checked yeah, that pa- one. Yeah. Page seven. Tell them they're awesome. <laughs> Listen. Uh, April 5th, the reboot record comes out. There are two songs out today. Luke Combs with Brand New Man, Kane Brown with Believe, Brooks and Dunn's here. Let me say this, too, because we have a lot of listeners on our Vegas station. Reba, Brooks and Dunn together in the Vegas Coliseum at Caesars Palace. And so the 2019 dates on sale now are June 26th, 28th, and 29th, and July 3rd, 5th, and 6th. So I hope people go check it out. I'm going to go. You know what? I don't mm-hmm. ever go to anything, right? Because yes. I'm, I'm busy. You should go. I'm, I'm way cool, right? <laughs> You're everywhere. Well, you are. I'm not that cool, but I am everywhere. I'm trying to be cool. I'm working. <laughs> Ronnie, I'm working hard. I'm a hard-working man. We talking about I'm a hard, hard-working man. man. Listen, I was talking to Ronnie about dancing with his daughter. I was like, dude, I just got off that show when I saw you guys, and I was like, I'm tired, Ronnie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, That's what everybody says. I was like, I'm it's hard. I was tired. Um, <laughs> so I'm gonna come. Hard. I'm gonna want to watch one of these shows. Well, come on. Can, can you give me some tickets? Uh, <laughs> we got some people, don't we? This don't is when I hit them up on the yeah, air. They can't yes. say no. You show up, you're uh, right. All right. Uh, Brooks and Dunn. And uh, yeah, check out the. I'm excited about the record. I'm excited to see you guys. Uh, appreciative of both of you guys, like individually. Because until uh, DC, I hadn't seen you guys together ever. But I appreciate you guys being cool to me. And uh, yeah, thanks, guys. Cool, man. Well, thanks for doing thanks. Thanks. No thanks. kidding. Yeah. Appreciate it. One more time. Oh, you guys are awesome. Just want you guys to know. You're a big part of my, my growing up and loving country music in a small town in Arkansas. Dang, my like, head's getting small. It was, I'm Something's telling you. Yeah. Page this six, page six, get out of here. This see? is it for me, man. This, this is, I, can, I can retire now. I've done it. Yeah, I've done I think it all. this is like, this. there's only a few people he geeks out on. And it was probably uh, Garth. And Brooks and Reba, Dunn. Reba and, and Brooks and Dunn. I mean, because you guys are what I literally grew <laughs> yeah. up with. Like, I, like this is my childhood mm-hmm. right that, here. That does what, make what us town, feel What good, town of Rockstar did you grow up in? Well, I grew up in a town called Mountain Pine, which is 700 people okay. outside of Hot Springs. All right. But you know, as I do, you grow up in a small town in Arkansas, Oklahoma, you go everywhere. Yeah. So, you know, you mentioned El Dorado. Uh, I, I, know. I know it well. We used to play ball down there. Yeah. So, uh, all right. I'm going to let you guys go. You've, okay. been, you've been here a long time. I'd like to do a couple more hours, but we can't. Ronnie's trying to walk out the door right now. No, I'm not. All right. I'm going to get out of your way. I feel like I'm going to be